Louisiana Beer Reviews presents Bywater Vanilla Bourbon Stout. This is from Port Orleans, right there along the Mississippi River in uptown New Orleans. This is brewed in collaboration with 73 Distilling Company, a distillery in New Orleans, and they take this vanilla flavored, well, the vanilla is added after the aging, but it's they age the stout in. 7-3 bourbon barrels that's bourbon produced in New Orleans, aged in New Orleans, bottled in New Orleans. And um, we have some small distilleries here and we're getting more because now we know that Southern Comfort, the 100 proof, the black label, and the original recipe is produced in New Orleans. But this is aged in 7-3 distilling bourbon barrels then they add vanilla, and it's 11%. is an imperial stout, barrel age in the southern heat. Well, talking about heat, here we are in March, still winter time, at the time of this recording, 2022, and it's cold. Cold. Now, bright and sunny. Yes, it felt pretty nice when I was out there walking. I have to go walking again one more time today. Very windy, a little bit unpleasant in that respect. But usually when we think of March, we think of warming weather, people going around wearing short pants, but not the case. And it's strange that it'd be so cold this late in the season with all the warming around the globe. They tell us it's getting warmer, but yet it gets colder, and it's not adding up to it. All right, so um, there's an essay on the back. But you basically have to read this essay because if you look on the website, they don't say too much about it. They do list it, but they don't say too much. It's just a clear cylindrical aluminum can with the uh, adhesive paper label with a kind of matte finish. All right. Not cheap. $17.99 for a four-pack of pint cans at Matherns. But you want to play, you got to pay. You want to go cheap and get something that's enjoyable. Um... Yeah, you can get a 40 ounce bottle of Bud Ice at a local Circle K convenience store. I bought one, it's enjoyable, it's not up to this level, but then you knew that already before I told you that. Thin beige head and a very dark brown appearance. You can see that it's brown though, it's not black, but it's close, it's close, it's close. Is Imperial Stout my favorite style of beer? Uh. Possibly, possibly. I never get tired of them. This is going to taste like a milkshake, a chocolate vanilla milkshake. Okay, there's no, there's no lactose in it. I don't think it's an 81 out of 100 on Untapped. That's extremely high for Untapped. Only like 131 check-ins. Um, oh yeah, locally grown wheat and locally grown corn makes the bourbon. Now, I didn't know they grew wheat in Louisiana, but apparently they do. Corn, that, that must be north Louisiana and higher latitudes, but still in the state. Apricot and dried fruit flavors from the bourbon are unique. Well, I'm not gonna go into all that. All right, vanilla, is it just vanilla extract that you get in the bottle like from McCormick, or is it actual vanilla beans? They don't say. I don't believe. Full, full body, rich, chocolatey stout base, and let it age for a few months. Don't say how many. Five, four, three, I don't know. Before adding vanilla for some additional sweetness. Yeah, that's all they say. All right. Um, not vanilla flavoring, but actual vanilla more than likely in a liquid extract form. All right, aroma. This is sort of like a super robust version of the Line and Kugel's Snowdrift Vanilla Porter, which I think is a great beer and it's a great value. You can get a 12 pack of that beer at Walmart for less than the four pack of these pint cans. Think about that for a minute. Now, that's 5.7% alcohol, so it's a porter, it's not an imperial stat, it's thinner body. It's a wonderful product. Oh. 
there is just an elaborate vanilla nose, deep, rich, dark bread, crust, chocolate, malt, like a chocolate malt, chocolate milkshake. Uh, uh. Let's go with the taste. I wish I had words. I wish I had words. Well, actually, I do have words. Um, get the bourbon barrel. And I, I really need to visit those distilleries. Once Easter season gets here, and because uh, I gave up liquor for Lent. Not liqueurs, not beer, not wine. Liquor, you know, brandy, tequila, mezcal, whiskey, rum, up, etc., up. I'd like to visit those distilleries. They're right there. <clears throat> but then, you know, I'm going to want to taste the products as I take the tour, especially if I'm paying $25 for the tour. You know, I'm going to want to taste the products. So we can wait. We can wait. Patience is a virtue, so I have to be virtuous. Um, rich, deep bread, dark black bread. Like if you go to Volksfest at Deutsch's house, you get the black bread. Velvety mouthfeel, high, I wouldn't say heavy body though, but high, medium, maybe heavy. Um, chocolate, vanilla, strong vanilla. They really, they, they, they were not uh, stingy on the vanilla. If you don't like vanilla, run from this, you'll hate it. There is a little chalkiness though. There is a little chalky thing going on that you get with these high gravity lagers or ales, beer in general, much more evident in lagers. But, um, Get above 10%, you're just going to typically get the chalkiness. Except if you get the flavored ales like Club Tails, because they're so distilled out, they make them like a, a beer-based vodka, so it kind of eliminates that. That's a different animal in many ways, most ways. It's like a um, sweet to dry finish. So let's say 55% sweet, 45% dry. On the sweetness scale, it's probably three and a half. Four, okay, four out of five sugar cubes. It's really sweet. It's a dessert product, and I'm drinking it long before dessert. <laughs> but anyway, uh, you would it would go better with dessert. Um, bitterness scale is very low, actually. Some of these imperial stouts, like Old Rasputin and whatnot, to be very bitter, from, usually from the char aspects like the, the roasted malts more than the uh, hops and from what I can tell but um yeah bitterness they don't list the bitterness units and I have a feeling I know why they, they maybe they shame that it's so low IBU they shouldn't be shamed it's just the way it is everything that not everything do not have to be bitter <laughs> One out of five hop cones, really. Obviously, it contains hops. That's a legal requirement for any malt beverage. Um, but uh, some things are fine as a dessert uh, pastry, kind of a pastry style, because this tastes sort of like an eclair, eclair, what you call that? Uh, there's uh, pastries, I mean... If you love the sugary things, you will love this. Now, if you're not attuned to sweet products and you're more in the bitter range, bitter realm, oh, yeah, you just, it'll be a total turnoff. I'm happy to report that I enjoy the really bitter, extreme bitter products and the extreme um, sweet and all the things in between. So that's a blessing in a way because I can enjoy a lot of different products. But some people don't. They just don't. And that's it doesn't make you bad because you don't like it. Just you don't like it. Uh, yeah, it's really fantastic. Um, you'd be tempted to give it a hundred, kind of like that uh, Mackinac Fudge Stout from that was twelve percent twelve from um, Founders 
or the uh, what was the other one I gave a hundred uh, recently? So, um, it's from a bigger company, but this one can't go that high. I, I got to go ninety-eight. Still ninety-eight. I mean, it's so high. But the the, the chalkiness would be a two percent uh, detriment. But is it worth the seventeen ninety-nine? Well, that's in the eye of the drinker, right? In the palate of the drinker. If you want to. Some of y'all going to say, oh, no, uh -uh, I'm paying that kind of money for a four-pack. It's fine, but for a luxurious item, it's worth it, okay? Uh, if you drink this every day, then you would start to hate it. You know, it would be too much sweetness, too much richness, and it would be, it would be unpleasant. But then, of course, this is not designed for everyday drinking. It's designed for once a month, every month or two. And then it works. So uh, I was, you know, kind of like making a quip about Bud Ice. Well, that is designed for everyday drinking. You know, 125, 120, 121. I think it's 121 calories, so very low. Still getting 5.5% alcohol, super crisp, you know, super, dr or, or a relatively high uh, dry level. And so, yeah, that is designed for everyday drinking. And that's why it's $20 a 30-pack or natural ice, $19.49 a 30-pack. And But, I mean, I'm telling you things you know already. People are like, we know that. That's it's like common knowledge. Okay. Fair enough. I got two cans left. I want my friend David to try it if he's, if uh, he's usually, well, he's game for trying these things, but he's not so much oriented toward the super sweet products. So I think if we do get together for a uh, duo review, he, his score is not going to be a 98. It won't, it won't be as high, but I could be wrong. I don't think I'll be wrong. Because of my past experience with him in f sweet oriented products, he's not a he he likes them in many cases, but not as uh, uh, geared up for them. But uh, yeah, ninety eight out of one hundred, nine point eight out of ten, an outstanding bourbon barrel aged vanilla added imperial stout from New Orleans, Louisiana. And I'm going to end this review by saying, y'all go to New Orleans and tour either or both. Port Orleans Brewery, which I have not toured. Okay, there's a project. And 7-3 Distilling in uh, Mid-City, which I've not toured. There's a project. And I'm going to end this review by saying, oh yeah, <laughs> well, there's 11%, so. Uh, but anyway, y'all do that. <laughs>